caged big cat of some kind. I've got people complain that they can't take me. <laughs> but today, we are doing something special, something I haven't done in years. And I am reading to you today from the next to me book. <laughs> now, we're going to read a little bit of it, and then we'll take questions, both about that and about other things in your mind. <laughs> um, but this book is entitled Jason. Yes. <laughs> and as Micah was an original paperback featuring Micah, well, do the math. <laughs> I guess there really weren't any numbers in there, were there? Yeah. Hey, I have a degree in biology and literature. You do the math. <laughs> Um, and uh, we're going to read from that, and then we'll talk about some other special stuff that we're doing that's new and different. And uh, those of you here today, some of you are going to be live tweeting. We even have a hashtag. What hashtag did we agree on? Does anyone remember? Werewolf of Benefits. Werewolf of Benefits. <laughs> was clear winner, werewolf with benefits. <laughs> so, without, it's just weird to be reading in public again. We're glad we well, appreciate it. There you are. <laughs> I guess I have to sit down now because I can't hold it and wrap. Yes, but where would the third hand come from? It's just doesn't bear thinking about. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop right there. Because <laughs> I'm going to start speculating. <laughs> I feel short sitting down. I think that's why I don't. I really do. Yes, and you're out there going, but you are short. Well, that's true, but I don't like feeling short. That's different. Um, I sit in the room by myself, and I play with my imaginary friends. And then someone in New York decides, oh yeah, we published that. And here I am. And these guys, these are, this is the page breaks. I'm holding my hands. So you guys are getting, getting it hot off the press, as it were. Thank you. Jason Schuler, one of my best friends and favorite werewolves, stood in the morning sunlight of the kitchen. His yellow hair gleamed in the light so that his boyishly handsome face was haloed with sunshine. But as I looked into the pure, soft blue of his eyes, I knew that devil's horns were more his style than halos. And pure was only a way to describe his eyes, not him. He'd been a precocious teenager, and his day job was still assistant manager and exotic dancer at Guilty Pleasures. The body that showed around his tank top and jogging shorts proved... <sighs> nope. Proved <laughs> he stayed in shape for his job, but none of that was what made Halo seem wrong for him. He had a streak of mischief in him, so strong that he couldn't quite resist pushing everything. If the situation was tense, he had to resist not making a wisecrack at the wrong moment. Since I had the same urge, it was one of our bonding moments. He and I both tended to poke the proverbial badger with a stick until it brushed out of the hole and tried to eat us. <laughs> we both learned over the years to curb this urge and were much happier for controlling that part of us. But Jason still had that edge of deviltry to the smile on his face and the shine of those spring sky eyes. I pushed my own thick black curls away from my face. They fell right back against my cheek, but sometimes it's the effort that counts. I sat at the kitchen table in my long silk robe, sipping coffee and watching that smile on his face. Either he was enjoying the hell out of getting us all out of bed this outrageously early hour, or he was hiding behind the smile. Most of us have our blank face, a version of the cop face, and Jason hid behind a grin usually. But since he also spent a lot of time actually smiling, laughing, or grinning, it was great camouflage for whatever else he was thinking. I tucked my robe a little closer across my chest, 
not because Jason hadn't seen him nude in the past, but because he asked for a conversation as his friend, not a friends with benefits booty call. So flashing breasts seemed inappropriate. It was tricky sleeping with someone who was actually your friend, but never quite your boyfriend. A thin line to walk between true friendship and, hey, baby. <laughs> we all work nights, Jason. What's so important to get us up this early? His grin widened, and he stepped forward enough so that I could see his straight blonde hair without the sunshine special effects. He cut his hair again, almost businessman short. He was one of the few men I knew who really did look better with shorter hair. It seemed to open up his face and make you see that he was handsome in his own right when he wasn't clowning around or being irritating, though honestly, the last part had almost gone away. I met Jason when he was 19. Now at 25, he had grown up. I was only five or six years older than he was, depending on the time of year. Our birthdays may just seem to gain or lose a year on each other. At 25 and 30, it wasn't a big age difference. At 19 and 25, it seemed like more. Let's wait for everyone else, he said, and sipped his own coffee. He didn't really drink a lot of coffee. He sipped at it and would eventually put it down about half drunk and cold. Since we ground our own beans and used a French press to make the coffee, it was a waste of good hot caffeine. <laughs> I held around my third cup of it, determined to make up for Jason's lack of enthusiasm. Envy walked into the kitchen. She was 5'11", so she towered over Jason and me. I was 5'3", and he was 5'4". She combed her thick, almost shoulder-length blonde hair, but hadn't bothered with makeup any more than I had. The strong cheekbones of her face seemed unfinished without the makeup. So you got a glimpse of what she might have looked like at 15, and she was a very grown-up, early 20-something. She'd thrown an oversized man's t-shirt over her, and on me, it would have come to mid thigh, or even my knees. On her, it barely covered her ass, so that she was all long, golden legs, and she padded barefoot into the room. She was everything I wanted to be when I was a little girl. Tall, blonde, and Nordic-looking, like my father, and stepmother, and stepsister, and half-brother, and but I made peace with my mother's Mexican heritage that had given me black curls and dark brown eyes. I could even acknowledge that my skin was paler than Evie's, and she tanned better than I did, which seemed wrong. She blinked pale blue tiger eyes into the sunlight as if she was startled. None of us were warning people. The tiger eyes were literal. She was part of the Golden Tiger Clan, which was one of the few inherited types of lycanthropy, and one of the ways they proved their pure bloodlines was they were born with permanent tiger eyes in their human faces. Most of the other rare animals I'd seen with animal eyes in human form had them because they'd spent too much time in their beast form. You could get stuck, and usually the eyes were the first thing to stick. Coffee's hot, I said. Tea, she muttered. I started to tell her to help herself, and then realized she didn't know where the tea was or anything. It was the first time Indy had stayed overnight at the house in Jefferson County. She'd lived at the circus of the dam with the bulk of our people, but she'd been dropped off here after her date with Richard Seaman, Wolf King, Ulfric, of the local werewolves and college biology professor. He had a house out here in Jefferson County, too, so it made more sense for him to drop her here than driving all the way back into the city of the circus, to the circus. But I wasn't sure I wanted him to make a habit of it. Richard was sort of my ex. We had been briefly engaged. We still had sex occasionally, so having his current lover dropped at my house for a sleepover was a little weird. <laughs> He had offered to sleep over with Envy here, but I and she had vetoed it. We were all polyamorous, which means to love more, so everyone knew what, what and who everyone else was doing, but that didn't mean there weren't moments when too much sharing was, well, too much. Richard's work schedule was almost the opposite of mine, which meant that though we were lovers, it wasn't that frequent. Sex with him was great, but we'd both done a lot of emotional damage to each other over the years, and the needs he'd met in my life were now met by other people who liked or loved each other and got along a hell of a lot better than with other men. Richard was trying, but in some ways he'd worked out his shit too late to truly be a part of our happy little poly group. He sort of floated on the edges of my life and I on his. Maybe he'd slept in one of the guest rooms, but still it was the first time she curled those long legs underneath my kitchen table. Was I supposed to wait on her? Fetch her tea? I felt the first bubbling of anger, which was still one of my best things, but I didn't know what else to do. What kind of tea do you want, Jason asked. He put his coffee down and went to the cabinets. He stayed over enough to make tea without having to ask directions. Mint, she said, and laid her head on her arms, so she looked like she was going to take a nap on the table. Peppermint, spearmint, or a medley, he asked. You pick, she muttered, not raising her head. Rough night, I asked, sipping more of the strong black coffee. 
She moved her head enough to roll an eye at me through the long yellow hair. It reminded me disturbingly of Deb, her cousin, who was also a rare type of the Gold Clan and one of my lovers. Deb was short for Devil, which was a nickname for Mistopheles. Envy had gotten one of the better family names. <laughs> you really need to have sex with him more often, she said. You mean Richard? I asked, because she was also sleeping with Jean-Claude, head vampire of the United States, and my fiancé. I did mention that we were polyamorous, right? It wasn't cheating, because everyone got everyone else's permission, but it was complicated, sometimes very complicated. Yes, she said, still just looking at me with that non in one inhuman eye. Did Richard ask you to talk to me? No, she said, and just looked at me as if waiting for me to say something. Was I supposed to pry in my shadow? What made it a rough night, Jason asked. He filled the rapid heat electric pill and was starting to warm up. He had a mug and a tea bag was trailing out of it waiting. There was actually loose leaf tea in there somewhere, but no mint outside bags. Amy turned her head enough to look at him so that all I could see was the thick hair. I don't think you'll understand. Try me, I'm very sympathetic. <laughs> he grinned when he said it, which left a debate on whether he was really sympathetic or just kidding. He really is a good listener, I said. She rolled her head back to look at me, and I realized that her hiding her face in her hair might be a stress reaction. What the heck had happened last night? He, he says you and he just can't get your schedules to match up for sex lately. Is that true, she asked. Yeah, I said, and drank more coffee. Maybe if I just drink enough of it, I could do this conversation without losing my temper. <laughs> do you enjoy the sex? I drink more coffee. <laughs> Maybe if I drown myself in it. <laughs> yes. When he's really rough, how do you get him to stop? You get him to stop by saying, no, stop, I said. She, she rose up enough to shake her head, no. I can say no, and he'll respect that. I mean, how do you tell him it's too rough? I fought up and frown at her. I say, ow, that hurt. Stop it. <laughs> Jason piped up. Or my favorite, do that again and I'll kill you. <laughs> You're not saying it right, Jason. It's do that again and I will fucking kill you. <laughs> he laughed. Oh yeah, I forgot that part. He leaned against the cabinet, grinning at both of us. I didn't feel like smiling, so I glared at him, his grin widened, the eyes sparkling with it. No. 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 I I'm, 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 having, I'm, having, I'm having people talking to me at both sides, and I was supposed to do seven minutes and then stop and take questions. And you're all going, and... Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I'm not on the chapter. I'm really not. Um, how about how about if I read to you one more page? It ends on a sentence rather than the middle one. That's yeah. right. Okay. My OCD is showing. I shook my head and went back to cuddling over my coffee. Jason's incorrigible, trying to courage him, just irritated me. I used the hell out of Al really is a safe word for me. I said. Richard says you like those sex. Was he lying? I stared into my coffee, debating whether to get up and add to the cup, or if I had courage to look her in the face while we had this conversation. Fuck, courage it was. I turned to look at those beautiful, otherworldly eyes and said, I like more sex, I like sex with Richard, now what's up? What do you want to know or say? She sat up straighter, squaring her shoulders. Well, that's direct. I'm pretty sure I've had this conversation with other girlfriends of his over the years, so just say it. And he did the sex get too rough last night? Yes. And what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> do you really like sex as rough as he does? Sorry. Yeah! I'm sorry. I'm supposed to read to a certain point and then I'm supposed to take questions. No, That's the point. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, we have Leah over here, and if you would like to ask a question, you need to line up with Leah, please. What's the next part? And Edward is going, don't line up. Don't, line up. <laughs> don't rush and knock her up or anything. But yeah, she's. Um, one of the things, uh, people, yeah, she should ask questions now, and you're just going, just <laughs> But I don't think I was giving the option to just let you vote. Do you next time? Um, do we have people lined up? Are we ready? 
Yeah, I read that you were working on a new Mary book. Is that done, and when is it coming out? Uh, Mary, the new Mary book came out in June. <laughs> yes, yes. And one of the interesting things I discovered is that uh, due to changes in Facebook, people are still coming up going, I didn't hear about that. I still don't know how new Facebook works. It me. <laughs> Mary came out in June, uh, Shiver of Light, and... Uh, Um, do you mean my start as a published writer or writer in general? Either or. Um, I don't know why I wanted to write, but I know that by 12 and a half I was writing stories because all my characters for years and years were exactly my age. It makes it easy to know when I was writing it. At 14 I finished my first short story. It was a bloodbath. It was a horror story, bloodbath. Everyone died except the baby. The implication is it crawled into the woods to starve to death. <laughs> The most helpful 